So 8.3 is about inverse trig functions. Um, we've done a little bit of the notation and, and things about inverse trig functions. The inverse operation, when we did Sokotoa, how do you find the angle? You use an inverse uh, trig function. But we really, really haven't talked about the graphs, and we're really actually not going to graph much of anything in this uh, particular lesson, but uh, it does go with 8.1 and 8.2, so I wanted you to see them. So you might recall that an inverse trig function is used to find an angle measure. So there were two ways that we have talked about already. You can see that negative one uh, notation. That little negative one notation does not mean anything about an exponent. It means that we are undoing and we are finding an angle measure. Um, some older textbooks and some you know, European textbooks they will use the notation arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, et cetera. Um, that is the only time, remember, that you use the second button on your calculator is when you are finding an angle measure. That second button on the calculator gives you an angle measure. Now, here's the problem. The calculator will only interpret the angle measure as in a positive is in the first quadrant. But think about a positive cosine could be in the first quadrant or in the fourth quadrant. A positive sine could be in the first quadrant or the second quadrant. So that's where the calculator is a little bit limited. It's only going to tell you approximately, maybe sometimes even a reference angle, but not the real thing. So you have to be as you know smart, smarter than the calculator in the fact that sometimes we might end up in a different quadrant than what the calculator is telling us. But we've used this before when we did Sokotoa and we wanted to undo and find an angle measure, we hit that second button. So that's the only time we do this inverse trig function is if we are trying to find an angle. What's interesting on the unit circle, normally we say, oh, what is the sine of two pi over three? We go from the radian measure to the point on the unit circle. Here, we're going to go from the point on the unit circle to the angle measure. Most of the time, we're going to be using radians and not degrees. So that's some things to think about. So um, this will be a little bit familiar, but you have to just be careful on some of this notation, OK? So some things to think about for a trig function. The domain is the angle measure. The range is the ratio, opposite over adjacent, opposite over hypotenuse, whatever the ratio happens to be. For an inverse trig function, look what happens. See how they switched? The domain is the ratio. So, you know, maybe I got square root of 2 over 2. What does that mean as far as the angle measure goes? You'll see the range is the angle measure. So normally we're used to saying, oh, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And here we're saying the angle measure of pi over 6 is the inverse sine of 1 half. See the difference? Here, the uh, inverse cosine of negative 1 leads us back to pi. Here, the cosine of pi was negative 1. Here, the inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4. Here, the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So just watch how those measures are, um, you know, are calculated. Uh, so we are going backwards on the unit circle, okay? And so you might have to really think, well, what quadrant am I in? Um, things of that nature. So, so just so you know how these work, uh, if I say the inverse sine of one half, I'm going, well, what angle measure on the unit circle gave that to me? Pi over 6. If I'm saying, what is the inverse cosine of negative 1? What angle on the unit circle gives me a cosine of negative 1? Um, if I say, what is the inverse tangent of 1? What angle does that? So remember, your answer to an inverse trig function is always an angle measure. And it is customary to give the answer unless, uh, unless it mentions otherwise, to give those answers in radian measure. So, so just watch, you're going to see a lot of pi over pi over, and that's where knowing your unit circle for this section will really be helpful. 
Um, we're not going to graph them, but I did want you to see the graphs of our inverse functions. For it to be a function, we have to limit what um, uh, what quadrants we're in. So like here, our sine function's wave will keep going and going, okay? But if we just restrict it to, uh, in this case, they're, they're restricting it from negative pi over 4 to positive pi over 4. Uh, we only get one, one curve of the graph. We will keep it a function. So here, here's our cosine graph. You know, our cosine graph would keep going. Um, but here's our inverse. So remember, an inverse function goes across the line y equals x. The y's become x's, the x's become y's. And here's what an inverse tangent function looks like. So think about our tangent function. It kind of looks like a cubic. Um, this one, it will go across this line. So we're never going to graph these. Um, you might have to graph them if you're a person that like goes into engineering and you take uh, Calc 3. You may have to, to graph them. But otherwise, most people don't have to graph inverse trig functions. We're not going to. So some things I want you to note, OK? And um, here, so I'm going to draw a little picture. So I would draw the little picture to the side here. For the sine function, um, we can plug in uh, anything between negative 1 and positive 1. Um, but we're only going to search for our answers between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So it looks kind of like that. Now, I want to uh, kind of look at the ones that kind of do the same. Tangent has the same sort of relationship. The only difference is you have open circles. Those are where the asymptotes would be. So they go from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And then the other one that does that is cosecant. So those three kind of go together. Cosecant has its issues just at 0. Its asymptote is at 0. Oh, no, so those are colored in. I'm sorry. This is open. Okay, so those three, and I'll kind of, here, let me, so this one, this one, and this one kind of have the same uh, answers. We're going to only search for answers in the uh, first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. We're going to call the first quadrant the positive answers, and then we'll call the fourth quadrant uh, the negative answers, okay? So let me just see what that's what those look like. So uh, sine uses all of them. Co uh, tangent has a uh, open circles at the pi over twos, and cosecant has just an open circle at uh, zero. Okay, so so those ones kind of go together. I believe those are the only ones that go together. Yeah. Okay. So those ones go together. And then uh, let's put uh, these three together. And I think that might have they might have gone together when we when we memorized them. Maybe those were the three that went together. Um, let's draw the picture for a cosine, a cotangent, and a secant. So the cotangent, we're only going to be looking for answers between zero and pi. So the positives are in the first quadrant. The negatives are in the uh, second quadrant. The only thing different between that and cotangent is cotangent have open circles at their little ends. And then uh, secant is undefined at pi over 2. Okay, so those little pictures will help you to find, hey, where do I look for the answers? 
where do I look for the answers, okay? So cosine, cotangent, and secant go together. Sine, tangent, and cosecant go together. So those little pictures, use those as a guide. You may even want to take a little screenshot of that um, so that you have it on your iPad. So when you're doing these, um, you can immediately know where to look. Um, this page, though, uh, gives us all the restrictions on our inverse trig functions. So um, the domain is just what can you stick in? And that usually what's interesting about these is it's the range. Where do I look for my answers is the most important thing to know. So remember, sine, tangent, and cosecant, we're really keep looking for the answers between positive pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Cosine, cotangent, and secant, we're really looking for the answers between 0 and pi. Now, there are some restrictions, of course, because we can't flip over 0. We're going to get an uh, undefined value, and that's, you know, some of those things end up being undefined. That's why some of them are closed circles, and some of them are open circles. So uh, this page is super important um, that you know. I will probably draw those little restrictions uh, and lump them together up on the board, and you'll have those. Those are not something I necessarily need you to memorize, but I need you to know how to understand it, how to use. So I'll probably be putting those up on the board that they'll just be there for your reference. Eventually, I'll put them up there, okay? So let's look at some actual, um, let's look at some problems. It says, uh, for example one, uh, write a relation involving the inverse sine function. So our angle measure is equal to the inverse sine of the ratio 0 0.96593. That's what they mean by that. So a sine on your angle measure, if you want to take it off, you will put an inverse sign on the other side. Okay. Now, let's look at our first real example of going backwards. So remember, this says where on the unit circle would the sign equal one half? That's what it's really saying. What angle measure? Remember, this is saying... What angle measure does this happen? Now, for a sine, we are going to be looking for our answers between positive pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Normally, there are two places where the sine is equal to positive 1 half, but we can narrow it down. The positive one we're looking for would only be the first quadrant value. So that's what's nice about a sine. So let's think about where is the sine equal to one half. So if we look at the point for uh, pi over six, 30 degrees, pi over six has the uh, point square root of three over two, one half. So there's the thing we're looking for. There's the one half we're looking for. So the answer to this is pi over 6. So we're just going backwards on the unit circle. We're saying where or what angle measure gave me a sine value of 1 half? Well, the answer is pi over 6. Yes. That's just the point on the unit circle at pi over 6, square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. That's how you're going to find those. So again, knowing your unit circle by heart, uh, looking over your unit circle, having a picture of your unit circle uh, in your camera roll on your iPad would be very helpful at this point, okay, as we do these. So the answer is pi over 6. Now let's use the same logical thinking to answer this bottom one here. Now remember, the answer to this is a theta. It's an angle measure. This is really saying that the sine of theta was negative square root of 2 over 2. 
So where on the unit circle would we find a sign of negative square root of two over two if we just look in the first or the second quadrant? In the first quadrant, we would get positives. We don't want that. We want a negative value. The square root of two over twos, remember, they happen at the uh, 45s. So if we go smack dab in the middle at negative pi over four, we are using the point negative, uh, positive square root of two over two, negative square root of two over two. That's the one we're looking for, where the y value is negative square root of two over two. So the answer is negative pi over four. So what's great about sine, tangent, and cosecant is that uh, the negative in front just puts a negative on the angle measure. What is square root of 2 over 2 on the unit circle? That's 45. That's pi over 4. So the negative would give me a negative pi over 4 instead of a positive pi over 4. So your uh, answer will be an angle measure. So sine only uses the first and the fourth. We call the first quadrant the positive ones and the, the fourth quadrant all the negative versions, okay? So that is how we use it a little bit. Let me scooch in one more time and give everybody a chance to copy those down. So we're just using the unit circle to help us answer the question. I believe the cosine, the secant, and the cotangent become a little more difficult because we have to look between zero and pi. So our thinking is, you know, you have to think a little more, you know, what's, where's the cosine positive and where it's negative and stuff like that. Okay, let's keep doing them. Okay. So uh, the first one here, uh, example 2a is saying what angle measure would give me a sine of one half. So we're going to look for positives up here in the first quadrant. So uh, I think we just maybe did this one. <laughs> this is the point uh, at pi over 6. That is the point square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. So the answer is pi over 6. Did we do this one too? <laughs> um, well, let's change it. Let's make this the cosine. So uh, here's where it gets different. So let's do the cosine. Now, the cosine of negative square root of 2 over 2, um, we are going to look for the positives in the first quadrant, the negatives in the second quadrant. So our negative value is going to be over here because that's going to be the point uh, negative square root of 2 over 2 positive square root of 2 over 2. Or um, you might recall this is 0, this is pi. This would be 3 pi over 4. Still going to be the pi over 4s, but in that second quadrant, it's 3 pi over 4. So the answer is 3 pi over 4. So for the cosine, we have to search for our answers between 0 and pi. Um, from 0 to pi over 2, or 0 to 90, we are going to get positive cosines between 90 and 180, pi over 2 and pi. We're going to get the negative version. Okay. So that is our answer there. Here's a new one. We haven't done this one. Where is the cosine negative square root of 3 over 2? So again, let's draw the little picture that goes with the cosine so we can search for our answers. We get to look between 0 and pi. Somewhere in there would be where the cosine is negative square root of 3 over 2. Well, negative answers are over here. So I know I'm restricted to that second quadrant. The cosine, the x value, is more um, at the pi over 6's. So um, that would be 5 pi over 6's because that is the point negative square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. And that's the point we're looking for. So theta would be 5 pi over 6. So the cosine is negative square root of 3 over 2 um, in the second quadrant 
at 5 pi over 6, so our theta is 5 pi over 6. Do you see how these are working? Okay. Tangent. Where do we look? And I always forget, do we look for, I think that's negative 5 over 2 to positive 5 over 2 tangent. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's look here for tangent. Now, tangent, we only look for the positives up here and the negatives down here. We do have an open circle at this spot, I believe. Maybe not. And maybe the ends. See why I always put them on the board? Okay. <laughs> so if I don't always have them in my memory, I'm, I'm not expecting you to. So. so we can't use these. These are undefined. Okay. Anyway, the tangent is 1 um, at the 45s. It's positive in the first quadrant, negative in the second quadrant. So we're looking right here at pi over 4. That's square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. Because the x and y match, the tangent will equal 1. And so our theta is pi over 4. So as you can see, it really requires that we reverse our thinking on the unit circle and go backwards. And so that reverse thinking makes it so that um, you just, you know, you just have to know your unit circle values, okay? Um, that is something I'm never going to write on a board for you. I'm never going to give you a picture of the unit circle on anything we do. That's what you have to know. You always have to know the unit circle. Um, but I will tell you where to look. So for our sine, tangent, and cosecant, we're always looking in the first and fourth. For our cosine, secant, and cotangent, we're always looking from zero to pi. Okay, so I will let you know that. Okay, so we, we did that one. Okay, <laughs> let's take a look at B, the arc cosine of negative 2. Now, if you were to put this into a calculator, if you were to hit the second button and then the cosine and you put in negative 2, it would say domain error. Now, what does that mean when you say domain error? Uh, when it says domain error, that means that is not a legitimate value. Now, remember, think of our cosine wave that hasn't been messed with, the perfect cosine wave. It always goes up one, down one, up one, down one. Will it ever hit negative two? No. And so because of that, any time for a sine or a cosine, if you get something that is more than one or less than negative one. It always has to be jammed between those two values. If you get something that is more than one or less than negative one, it's undefined. It's not going to work. For secant and cosecant, remember how we have a parabola up and then the space and then a parabola down and then a space and then a parabola up. It's never going to be positive one or negative one or anything in between. Well, it could be positive one or negative one, but it's never going to be anything in between those values. So you just have to know your, um, you have to know your unit circle. We already did this one. Okay. Okay. So we've done those. Um, any questions about those ones? Is that making sense how those work? Here, you could even say that the cosine of theta will never equal negative 2, if that helps your brain a little bit. Okay, so knowing your unit circle is the main key for um, this section, so make sure that you know your unit circle, okay? So that's that. Okay, so now uh, let's talk about uh, using a calculator. Now, here's where you have to be careful, okay? The sign is positive in the first quadrant, negative in the fourth quadrant. So just be careful what the calculator is going to give you. Make sure it is within those quadrants when you interpret the answer. So what you're going to do on your calculator is you have to hit that second button. Some calculators do call it an inverse button or an INV. There'll be a little button that says INV. Most calculators have a second button. Then you're going to hit the sign. That sure doesn't look like the word sign. Anyway, then you're going to hit the sign button. And then you're going to input the number 0 0.97 like normal. And then you're going to hit equals. Okay. So, um, so you're going to hit 
second sign, 0 0.97. And remember, if it's in degree mode, you have to designate it with a degree symbol. If it's not in degree mode, if you tell me radians, that's okay. Um, and you should get, uh, and let's round these to the nearest degree. I don't want radians for these ones. If you're entering into a calculator, I don't want, want radians. If you're doing it from the unit circle, I usually always want radians. Anyway, um, this would be 76 degrees. So just make sure you're entering that correctly into a calculator, that you understand how your particular calculator uh, answers those questions. And be careful um, about what um, quadrant you're in, okay? So that is how to enter into a calculator. Again, just check. My calculators in the back are pretty straightforward as far as how you do these. Just watch that you're, uh, you are in degree mode. Okay. We've done these a little bit on triangles, um, but I just want to remind you how they work within a triangle. Uh, because it has the right triangle symbol, we can use Sokotoa, so that's the first thing to always look for, is it a right triangle? Uh, let's label the sides they've given us in relationship to where theta is sitting. This is the adjacent, and this is your hypotenuse. Go back in your brain to Sokotoa, uh, which one of our trig functions uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Which one of our trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse? The cosine. So let's write that down. The cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. All of those Sokotoa type things you can't forget. Pythagorean, 180 degrees, um, uh, Sokotoa, um, law of sines and cosines. Those are all good things to always have in your head. So let's set up what we know. We know that the cosine of theta is 9 over 12. So theta is going to be the inverse cosine of that ratio. So we would put into our calculator uh, the inverse cosine of that ratio, 9 over 12. Please make sure that you go to the nearest degree. If it does not specify, that's what I want. Because when we measure something in degrees, it's very hard to go to any more accuracy than the nearest degree. So you would uh, inverse cosine uh, 9 over 12. So you would hit that second button. And the only time we ever hit the second button is when we're looking for an angle measure. And we get 41 degrees. OK, so that's an easy thing. Uh, all our Sokotoa stuff does not just disappear because it's been a while. Uh, you have to always uh, know how to relate all of that Sokotoa sort of stuff, okay? So that's that. Anybody have any questions about how we did that one? Those are nice ones. So now let's go where there's some layers of things that are happening, okay? Um, So let's change, I'll change it when I get to it, okay. So we're going to see something really interesting happen when we go for the inverse sign and a sign that are sitting next to each other. Now look, see how A and B, there is a, um, they're same, it's kind of the same idea, just different points. But okay, so let's do this one. What is the unit circle value for sine of pi over 3? Well, the sine of pi over 3, remember, this is just um, 60 degrees. So the sine is your y value. It's your height. So that is going to be square root of 3 over 2. And then it says, well, what angle measure would give me a sine value of square root of 3 over 2. Well, we can only look for the positives in the first quadrant and the negatives in the last quadrant. Um, so the answer is, oh my goodness, pi over 3. Now, why does that happen? 
Well, they're inverse functions. Now, the only time that won't happen, that they'll just kind of cancel each other out, is if you were representing a positive in the wrong quadrant. So the sine can be positive in the first and the uh, second quadrant. We don't use the second quadrant for the inverse sine. So you might end up getting slightly different values if you come out of the second quadrant. So perfect example is B. Okay, so let's look at the difference between A and NB. Okay, so here at 120 degrees, the sine is square root of 3 over 2. That is correct. It is square root of 3 over 2. But the inverse sine doesn't search for answers in the second quadrant. It can only find positive answers in the first quadrant, negative answers in the, in the fourth quadrant. So the answer we get has to be the one out of the first quadrant. So our answer ends up being pi over 3. See the difference? I only get positive answers for the inverse sine out of the first quadrant, negative answers out of the fourth quadrant. So if I end up uh, starting in the second or the third, I'm going to end up getting an answer that will end up being in the first or the fourth. It forces you to only give answers in the first and the fourth. See the difference? Did that make sense how that worked? Hopefully it did. Okay, now let's look at same similar ideas that's going to happen for our cosines. Okay, cosine of 2 pi over 3, um, that's 120 degrees. The cosine is negative in that quadrant. So um, it, we're going to get an answer. Okay, so that's the negative one-half answer. Negatives for the cosine we find in the second quadrant, the answer is 2 pi over 3. So they reverse themselves perfectly. I stick in 2 pi over 3, I get negative one-half, I reverse and go back to 2 pi over 3. Here's the one that's different. Let's look at D. The cosine is the y value. No, it isn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> the cosine is the x value. And it, at the negative pi over 3, let me draw you a, a very poor picture, but you'll get the idea. At, that's negative 60 or negative pi over 3. The point there is 1 half uh, negative square root of 3 over 2. The cosine uses the x value. This is 1 half. Now, if I didn't see that, if I didn't know where that came from, and I said, where is the cosine positive one half? You can only get your answers out of the first or the second quadrant. Which one of those quadrants, first or second, has a cosine value that is positive? Is the cosine positive in the first quadrant, or is the cosine positive in the second quadrant? The cosine is positive in the first. So I've got to get my answer out of the first quadrant. So my answer is actually going to be pi over 3. So we have to be careful. If we have a cosine, if it starts with a cosine and then goes to a negative cosine or sign the negative, you know, the inverse uh, uh, notation, you might not get the same answer you started with because it all depends upon did you start with things in the correct quadrants. Does that make sense? So don't expect that they always reverse themselves perfectly. Now, for a cosine, if they come out of the first and second quadrant, they're going to reverse themselves perfectly. For a sine, if they come out of the first or the fourth, they'll reverse themselves. But otherwise, eh, you got to be careful. So that is the lesson, but if you could please look, see the, uh, the homework down here. Let's just take a second and do a few problems together just to make sure we're on the right, right track, okay? Now, what's really cool about 
when the inverse is on the inside, so I'm talking about this one, this one, and this one, and they match. So now I can throw those ones out. So this one. So if the inverse is on the inside and the regular sine cosine tangent is on the outside, if they are perfect to match, the answer is just what you see there. It's just a perfect match. But if it's like number two, number three, where they match, but the inverse is on the outside, watch what quadrant is giving you the answer, if that makes sense, okay? And then I wanted to do one because we didn't have one where they were different. So could everybody, let's look at number four together. We're gonna do number four together, okay? Okay, on the unit circle, the cosine of pi over six, remember that's just 30, is the x value at 30. So the x value at 30 is square root of three over two. Okay, so that's an easy thing. Hopefully you just know that that's, you know, just using the unit circle like we know how to use the unit circle. But now we have to go backwards. We get to search for a sign's answer between here and here. First quadrant and fourth quadrant. Where in the first quadrant or fourth quadrant is the sign positive? I know my answer is going to be up there. So I only have to search between 0 and 90, 0 and pi over 2. And it is perfectly that higher one at pi over 6. At pi over 6, the point is 1 half squared of 3 over 2. That's the thing I'm looking for right here. So my answer is pi over 6. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't do that right. What's the one where it's higher? It's 60 degrees, which is pi over 3. I'm sorry. The answer is pi over 3. I did not do my unit circle quite right, did I? Okay. Uh, now let's look at uh, 1 through 4. They just want us, even all 1 through 10, really, they just want us to reverse and go backwards on the unit circle. So let's do ones that are a little bit funky. Oh, let's see. Let's do number nine. Where is the arc tangent negative radical three over three? Okay. So remember, that is where the tangent of theta is negative square root of three over three. So we're looking for theta. What's the angle measure that does that? Well, the tangent is negative down here. We only have to look at first quadrant or fourth quadrant. And then we need to get that as an answer. So really, there's only two ones to choose from. It's either going to be negative pi over 6 or negative pi over 3. So let's determine which one of those it's going to be. Pi over 6 is the point uh, square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. And this is the point uh, 1 half negative square root of 3 over 2. Now remember, tangent is sine over cosine y over x. So the one that's going to give us the correct placement to get radical 3 over 3. We want the radical 3 to be in the bottom, so we have to rationalize. So that is only going to happen for this one right here. So our answer is negative pi over 6. 